Renault Zoe accounts for one in five European EV sales and in this updated ZE50 battery form now goes further in its efforts to persuade super mini buyers of its all electric virtues. 245 WLTP rated miles to be exact. A more powerful 100 kilowatt R135 motor delivers stronger acceleration, plus there's a smarter look both for the exterior and the cabin. If you've always liked the thought of an all-electric super mini but needed more convincing to buy one, Renault hopes that what's on offer here will be enough to make you think again. If you've ever hankered after an electric car, there might have been a few impediments to an impending purchase. Price, range, weird styling, not very appealing. To do better, you'd think you'd need a more recently introduced EV. Well, yes and no. This Renault Zoe seems to have been about almost since the start of the electric vehicle revolution, but this latest version is very different to the original. It's Europe's best-selling zero emissions model and if you're a family buyer it could just be the car that might persuade you to take the plunge into EV motoring. First a uh, bit of background. At the turn of the century Renault bet all its chips on the battery powered sector and made a 4 billion euro investment in new models to remarkably little effect. There was the crazy twizzy city scoot, the boring mid-sized Fluence ZE and also pricey ZE versions of the Kangoo and Master vans all of which generated about as much popular interest as Brighton Beach on a wet weekend. The only Renault EV we thought showed some promise was this Zoe, a handsomely styled Super Mini launched in 2012. High pricing and a low driving range from the little 22 kilowatt hour battery initially held the car back, but the French maker persevered, continually improving it as battery technology developed uh, all through a series of incremental updates. A more efficient R90 electric motor was introduced in 2015, a gutsier ZE40 battery arrived in 2016, and an even more powerful 80 kilowatt R110 electric motor arrived in 2018 to drive it. The biggest step in Zoe history so far though took place at the end of 2019 when a further upgraded 100 kilowatt R135 electric motor was mated to a new ZE50 battery rated at 52 kilowatt hours, one of the biggest outputs ever seen in a small EV. That was enough to enable the Zoe to go further between charges than any other properly super mini sized electric model, a WLTP rated range of up to 245 miles. That's almost three times as far as the original model. There's additionally now the option uh, to charge the car quickly via a 50 kilowatt DC rapid charging point. Plus, Renault will throw in a free wall box for your garage, and there's an extra B gearbox setting to facilitate so called one pedal driving. As well as all that and uh, tweaks to the exterior styling, there's also a completely redesigned cabin which has state of the art infotainment and media connectivity. You can even now have a van version. In all then, it's a, a rejuvenated proposition. Which is timely given that EV segment sales tripled within a few months of this updated model's introduction. So much so that well over 100,000 Zoes now pound European roads. But this Renault's market share is under threat from impressive, freshly launched super mini sized EVs like the Peugeot E208 and the Vauxhall Corsa E, as well as trendy lifestyle orientated compact EV models like the Honda E, the Mazda MX30 and the Mini Electric. And this Zoe sells at prices that might also have you glancing at its Renault Nissan Alliance cousins, Nissan's Leaf and Aria models, as well as state of the art compact EVs like the Hyundai Kona Electric, the Kia e Nero, and various VW Group smaller EVs like the Volkswagen ID3 and the Skoda Enyaq. 
So where does all that leave the Zoe going forwards? Will the changes made here be sufficient to ensure continued European market leadership? Can it yet salvage Renault's huge investment gamble in the EV revolution? And is it really now good enough to convince someone in search of a conventional family runabout to abandon combustion power for good? All timely questions, let's try to answer them. So, what's it like behind the wheel? Well, as ordinary as a pure electric car can ever be is the answer, which certainly was Renault's aim. Buyers have to feel comfortable in making the seismic step into this new electric world, and in a Zoe, you will be. Uh, now, the battery pack uh, runs beneath the front and rear seats, forcing an elevated driving position in a cockpit that feels a touch spacier than the usual super mini norm. But all of that's rather pleasant, and once you've adjusted, you'll be quickly feeling right at home, uh, provided you have no objection to digital displays. Only when you press the brake pedal and the starter button to bring the car to life, and this little bird tweet-like chime activates the drivetrain, do all the differences of all electric motoring begin. If you're new to it, uh, then apart from the relatively uncommon sight of a super mini with an automatic gearbox, the first of these differences that you'll notice is the near silence. There's merely the faintest hum from the electronics. Just as well, you have a big ready display on the digital dash. Otherwise, you might wonder whether the car is as ready to go as you are. It is. Plunk your foot on the loud pedal and you're propelled forward with the kind of urgency that usually characterises an EV. All the power plants talk being delivered in one hit rather than with the element of graduation that you get from even the most highly tuned combustion engines. A lot of this is down to the electric motor which put out only 65 kilowatts in the original version of this car but was updated to 80 kilowatts R110 guys in 2018 just after the original 22 kilowatt hour battery was upgraded to a bigger ZE40 40 kilowatt hour unit borrowed from this car's close cousin the Nissan Leaf. At the time of this test in mid-2020, that R110 motor was still available further down the range, generating 107 horsepower, but the Z40 battery wasn't. It was replaced in this extensively updated model by a much bigger Z50 52 kilowatt hour battery intended to keep the driving range of this Zoe competitive with the rival PSA group small EVs that Renault sees as this car's closest rivals, uh, the Peugeot E208 and the Vauxhall Corsa E. That pair put out 135 horsepower, and in order to match that output in a Zoe, a further evolution of Renault's electric motor was required. Hence the way that upper spec versions of this improved ZE50 model are matched to the R135 100 kilowatt motor that we're trying here. Now, if you've tried an earlier version of this car, and it's quite possible, given that it's been on sale for close to a decade, you should find that last update making quite a difference. Uh, this latest Zoe is the first car in the model line to be able to make 62 miles an hour in less than 10 seconds, 9.5 seconds to be exact. But a more relevance is the fact that the plumper 245 newton meter torque figure means it can now hold its own in faster traffic in a way that previous versions really struggled to do. Uh, the 87 miles an hour top speed is inevitably a lot less impressive, but this Renault charges up towards it with a will, especially, as just mentioned, from very low speeds. 30 miles an hour from rest takes just 3.6 seconds. Inevitably, a cheaper variant of this model with the older 80 kilowatt R110 motor is quite a lot slower. The rest, uh, 262 miles an hour sprint, occupies 11.4 seconds en route to 84 miles an hour. We touched on driving range earlier. You're certainly going to want to know about that. Uh, this ZE50 model's new 52 kilowatt hour batteries, greater capacity, has certainly improved things a lot here. Harnessing the charge power of 4,727 iPhones will do that for you. In fact, to go further between charges than the 245 mile WLTP rated range that the French maker now quotes for this car, you'd need to switch out of this Renault's Super Mini segment into a slightly bigger and certainly much pricier family hatch sized EV. 
And even then, you'd only beat this Zoe's range showing in the very priciest versions of cars like Nissan's Leaf, uh, Volkswagen's ID3, and Kia's e Nero. More directly comparable Super Mini EV models like Peugeot's E208 and Vauxhall's Corsa E, which use a battery of the same size, offer a range of up to 211 miles. Renault's greater experience in this segment is really telling here. As with all full battery models, you'll have to take the quoted range figure with a bit of a pinch of salt if your journey is going to include quite a lot of um, out-of-town work. And if you conducted it all on the motorway at 70 miles an hour, that range figure would be virtually halved. You'll need to have engaged the provided eco button for maximum frugality, and that restricts throttle response in return for a 10% range increase. And you can monitor power use or your regenerative energy harvesting progress on the instrument binnacle screen, either via this primary circular dial or by a selectable energy flow meter to the right of it. Harvesting of brake regenerative energy will of course be another key to range maximization and with this improved Zoe you can marshal that more easily by using this e-shifter to select the B mode which has been added to this single speed auto gearbox which curiously lacks a park setting. Uh, unlike rivals there's no option to vary levels of brake regeneration. Uh, selecting B merely maximizes it and enables the kind of one pedal driving that the French brand's alliance partner Nissan likes to think it pioneered with the current version of the Leaf. Basically that means that with B activated the car slows down so much when you come off the throttle that you'll hardly ever need to use the brake unless you want to come to a complete stop in a very short time indeed. Uh, some folk frown on the safety implications of that and we certainly wonder whether in this case it's a good idea to encourage it given that, thanks to the age of this Zoe design, autonomous emergency braking can't be fitted even as an option. Once you've adapted the way you drive to suit this car's all-electric remit, you start to forget the range issue and you start to notice some of the paybacks that come with milk float mobility. Uh, refinement, for example. Now, it is true that if you cruise at the legal limit, uh, which this car will do quite happily, uh, you do notice wind and tyre noise, but that's mainly because they're accentuated by the silence elsewhere. Thanks to extra soundproofing added into this revised model, this Renault is actually quieter than the last Rolls-Royce we tested, uh, with noise levels at normal driving speeds, say between 25 and 50 miles an hour, that are measured at between 60 and 65 decibels. That's two or three times less than a conventional petrol or diesel super mini with equivalent power. Below 25 miles an hour, this car is of course even more silent, which might present a hazard if you're coming up behind unsuspecting pavement folk. To make them more aware of your approach, EV legislation uh, now requires battery-powered vehicles to emit a warning sound when they're traveling at speeds below 18 miles an hour. In this case, uh, Renault calls it the ZE voice. It's a curious polyphonic noise that you'll either find satisfyingly futuristic or simply annoying. Uh, one writer likened it to a vacuum cleaner swallowing a ball of string. Fortunately, you can use this lower dash button to turn it off. Should these sound effects be insufficient to stop an errant pedestrian from straying into your path, you'll have to have mastered the rather curious, snatchy feel of the regenerative braking system, which relies on conventional friction, brake pads against brake discs, to stop the car only in the very last part of the braking phase, uh, making smooth application of the anchors uh, something that requires quite a lot of practice. But then most conventional super minis have little driving quirks that you have to work around. Uh, snatchy clutches, obstructive gearboxes, asthmatic engines and mushy throttle response at low revs. Uh, the Zoe has none of those. In fact, we're struggling to think of many small runabouts that can do the simple city task of shuffling forward in line a whole lot better. But what if you ask more of it? What if you want to take this vehicle out of its comfort zone a little? Well, is that a fair thing to ask of an urban orientated pure electric car? Probably not, but Renault makes great play of this model's everyday versatility. So let's drive the Zoe like a normal little runabout and see how it stacks up.
Now, although the Super Mini platform it rides on is borrowed from the previous generation Mark IV Clio, it feels nothing like that car, mainly because it carries over 300 kilos of extra weight, and most of that, of course, due to the substantial bulk of the lithium-ion battery that sits beneath the floor here. That's one reason why the car crashes a bit over low-speed bumps and road expansion joints, uh, although another more influential contributing factor might well be the uh, unyielding sidewalls of the Michelin Primacy low rolling resistance tyres. All of this is less noticeable once you get up to speed and you get onto faster roads. Uh, then you'll find that the Zoe actually handles poor surfaces quite well. Where we've most noticed the weight of this car is around faster bends. Uh, we'd actually expected this Renault to handle quite well given the central placing of the weighty battery pack and the usefully low centre of gravity that that brings with it. Uh, true enough, there is actually quite a lot of mechanical grip. Uh, you will need to be brave to explore it though uh, because if you ignore the over-assisted steering and you rather unwisely start to throw this runner around, you'll discover lots of body roll and very soon you'll come to the limits of those skinny Eco Michelins. Of course, you don't buy an urban orientated all electric car to drive it in that way, but should you be running late around twisting country roads and need to press on a bit, you'll have to bear all that in mind. Back in town though, you can't deny this to be a car that fulfills its primary design objective uh, quite brilliantly. It's one of the very best urban vehicles we've ever tried. It's easy to drive, eerily quiet, simple to park and quick off the mark. It goes further than most other compact electric models and it feels a good deal more versatile too. As a second or third car, you could really make a case for it. There's a balance needed with EV design. Choosing all electric motoring is radical enough without having to be faced with wild and wacky styling that marks you out on the high street as an extravagant early adopter. But delivering something dull doesn't really fit with the whole future orientated zero emissions ethos. Renault has already tried both approaches with the extreme twizzy urban runabout and the uber conservative Fluence ZE, but with this Zoe, they managed to get the approach just right back in 2012, rejecting futuristic early design sketches in favor of a smart, and very stylish look penned by Spanish designer Jean Semariva. He needs greater industry recognition. We can't think of any other car launched back then that would still look as current as this one does almost a decade on. Outwardly, not much has changed with this ZD50 model over that original car. Uh, not much needed to. We'd still argue that this is the prettiest thing the company makes. Uh, the differences here, such as they are, mainly feature at the front. Uh, now, most noticeable, if you know that earlier model, will be the replacement of the original tick-shaped curved corner dimpled daytime running light creases in favour of these larger vents uh, modelled on those used by the latest Clio. Uh, this lower grille that's also larger to better emphasise the width of the car and with top GT line trim you get chrome stamping. And the headlamps there freshly framed by Renault's signature C-shaped daytime running lights and they now feature full LED beams offering 75% more light. Uh, the familiar big central Renault badge which now gets a 3D finish continues to double as a charging port and it flips open to reveal both the Type 2 AC plug and where fitted the connector for this revised model's new 50 kilowatt DC fast charger. As with this model's conventional Clio counterpart, there's a wheel at each corner stance and there's beautiful detailing, perhaps most notably these two upper swage lines, uh, one which flows from the headlamp to the door mirror and the other one which flows from the uh, front door handle there back to the tail lamp. Uh, plus there's also an upwardly angled convex lower crease to give the flank some shape. Uh, the dimensions, they're interesting. The Zoe measures in at 34 millimeters longer than a Clio, but it's still very much a super mini. It's way shorter than a bigger family hatch sized EV like a Nissan Leaf or a Volkswagen ID3. Uh, the wheels here vary between 15 and 17 inches in size. We've got the 16 inch 
diamond cut rims here. And there's some really lovely detailing too. The LED indicator repeaters now on the door mirrors and perhaps most notably recessed into the corner of the rear door windows back door handles that carry stylist Semiriva's personal signature in the form of his thumbprint. Yeah, really. As for the curvaceous rear end, well, we rather like the original model's transparently finished rear lights with their blue concentric rims, but they have nevertheless been changed here in favour of bigger, bolder LED tail lamp clusters, which now include dynamic indicators, which sweep outwards from the centre of the car. Uh, the lower corner reflectors, they're now fully red, and as before, there's a subtle roof spoiler here with a bee sting aerial just beyond. So it looks the part outside, let's activate this hands-free keycard and check out what it's like indoors. It's certainly a little less willfully weird in here than it used to be. Uh, the original model's dashboard, uh, the design of it, supposedly inspired by the blade of a wind turbine, always looked disjointed and rather strange with an ugly bulbous steering wheel and two-tone light colouring that usually failed to stand the test of time. It certainly wasn't befitting a car of this price. Uh, the cabin of this updated Zoe is still a world away from the kind of classy feeling that you get in, say, a BMW i3 or a Volkswagen ID3, but it's certainly miles better than before in terms of perceived quality. The new single colored dash has been completely redesigned with this central horizontal strip to emphasize its width, plus there are upgraded soft touch materials, uh, principally around the central and upper areas of the fascia, and lots of smart metallic highlights. In particular, uh, these textile inserts around the uh, door card switches make a world of difference. The three-spoke wheel also now looks more appealing, as does the instrument binnacle screen you view through it. The previous trendy sliver of a display has been replaced here by this more usable, squarer, 10-inch TFT monitor, now big enough to display 3D mapping. Here, a central circular driving gauge is flanked by customizable sections that you alter via steering wheel buttons, uh, with trip computer, audio and nav functions selectable on the left, and either an energy monitor or an eco-driving leaf graphic available on the right. A driving range readout permanently appears along the bottom of the screen. Talking of screens, as before, there's a further one on the floating centre dash panel. Although with this revised model, there are changes in this area. Uh, the climate controls on the lower part of this appendage have been redesigned, so you get these smart circular dials. And the upper EasyLink 7-inch infotainment screen part of this panel can be upgraded, as it has here, to give you a much more satisfyingly sized 9.3-inch display. And this offers pinch and swipe functionality, along with voice control, and it has the usual touch-sensitive nav, radio, music, phone, uh, app and car info sections. Nav can guide you to local charging points, it can search for addresses using a Google Places feature, and it uses connected TomTom -tom services that give you real-time traffic updates. Car Info uh, will take care of your charge programming and in apps you can store photos and videos. Uh, there is also standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring uh, and always on 4G connectivity as part of a data pack that is included for the first three years of ownership. Uh, there is unfortunately no physical volume control for this monitor but as usual with a Renault you get a stubby steering wheel stalk for that purpose. Inevitably, because the battery pack is mounted beneath the front and rear seats, you have to sit fairly high up in this car, which is why, unfortunately, it's still not possible to have a height-adjustable driver's seat. Still, the wheel has enough adjustment for reach and rake to ensure that most will be able to find an acceptable driving position, and the seat itself is supportive. We're not quite sure whether door mirrors need to be so tiny though. Uh, maybe aerodynamics have triumphed over practicality here. Nice touches include the 
beautifully finished gear shifter here and the silver door pulls, while from mid-range upwards, uh, the seat upholstery is made from 100% recyclable material, apparently including old Renault seat belts. And on this top variant, it features part synthetic leather trim. Thankfully, there's no longer an impractical all white cabin trim option. What else? Uh, well, adjusting the climate control is a lot easier than it is on something like an E208 or a Corsa E because Renault has retained the physical climate controls we mentioned earlier. The view out of the front is pretty unobstructed, but the broad rear C pillars uh, block some of your over the shoulder view, which might be a problem if you go for the base play spec variant, which does without rear parking sensors. This top GT line version has few issues though, and that's thanks to all round parking sensors and and the rear view camera. As for cabin storage, well, the glove box is, as usual, with a French hatch halved in size by the vehicle's fuse box, but otherwise there is a reasonable amount of space for your uh, odds and ends. Uh, there's a cubby with a non-slip mat that's right above the glove box there. There's a big well at the bottom of the center stack with twin USB ports along with a 12 volt socket and an aux in point. You get decently sized door pockets and there's a small pair of cup holders behind the electronic handbrake here. And on most models, there's also a wireless charging mat just in front of it. Renault has forgotten to include an overhead sunglasses compartment, uh, but there is also a ticket clip here in the driver's sun visor uh, for your charging card. So let's take a look at the rear. Click on these thumbprint door catches and you'll find that getting in is a little easier than it is in a Clio, uh, even though you have to negotiate that high floor we mentioned earlier. Once inside, you'll find more room than most Super Minis can offer and vastly more than you get in either an E208 or a Corsa E. It's a bit more spacious than it is in the back of a Clio 2, even though this Zoe shares that car's same wheelbase length. Uh, your knees will still be almost touching the front seat backs though. Uh, obviously a slightly larger family hatch shaped compact EV like a Nissan Leaf or a Volkswagen ID3 would give you slightly more space than this, but not much. By the standards of smaller super mini EV class electric vehicles, uh, the Zoe does fare extremely well and that's helped by the lack of any kind of central transmission tunnel. That means that the uh, middle perch here is a much more viable place to be than is usual in this segment. Goes without saying that three children will be fine back here. Look up and you'll find that headroom's excellent too, at which point you might notice that the ceiling panel here has been imprinted with a circuit diagram to go with the whole electrified theme. Uh, most models get two centrally mounted USB ports back here too. Uh, we're not so keen on the way that the rear head restraints uh, dig uncomfortably into your shoulders until they're raised. And it does seem a bit mean not to include coat hooks on the grab handles here and the seat back pocket on the driver's side seat back. Uh, the left hand uh, seat back has this unusual side mounted pocket slit. Uh, the doors do have decently sized pockets and recessed handle trays. Let's finish with a look at the boot. Now the boot of a super mini EV ought to be bigger than that of a combustion engine model. After all, battery powered cars sit on a chassis uh, that would normally have to package in the fuel tank and a bulky internal combustion engine. Uh, that's all space that in an EV is more compactly occupied by an electric motor and by a set of batteries. So it's a bit disappointing to find that the 338 litre capacity uh, of this trunk is 53 litres less than what you get in the shorter Clio. Still, it is around 30 litres more than you get in those E208 and Corsa E direct rivals we mentioned earlier. So that is some compensation. Perhaps inevitably, quite a bit of space here is taken up by this charging lead bag. Uh, we'd want to specify the optional false floor cable storage compartment that would tuck everything away rather more neatly. Now, as usual with an EV, you have to do without any sort of space saver spare wheel, even as an option. And you also have to do without floor tie down points. You'd think uh, an electric vehicle though would have a 12 volt socket back here. And it is disappointing too, that with base plate 
play spec, you don't even get something as basic as a split folding rear bench. Uh, you have to stretch to a plusher variant like this one to get one of those. Uh, folding this bench reveals a huge step up from the boot floor to the folded seat level. Uh, we can't see any reason why a car of this kind couldn't be fitted with an adjustable height boot floor that would alleviate that. Uh, with everything folded like this, there's 1,225 litres of capacity to play with. Uh, that's actually 156 litres more than you get in the Clio. Buying an EV, any EV, remains a relatively pricey undertaking and it will remain so until sales volumes in this segment rise substantially. Uh, that is the case here and it will be with just about any rival you care to name. Now the good news in this case though is that it's no longer so damn complicated to buy a Zoe. Previous to the update we're looking at here, if you couldn't afford to fully purchase the car outright, Renault offered the option of buying the undriven car at a reduced price and then leasing the battery needed to drive it, which required selection between various complex mileage and duration tariffs. In earlier tests, we couldn't help thinking of this as something of a, well, a smokescreen really to make this car look more affordable. Renault has finally realised that competitive leasing and finance rates are better at doing that and has now scrapped the battery lease option in favour of a simple outright purchase price list. The French brand is still uncomfortably aware though that the pricing of this car remains far above what an ordinary super mini buyer would usually expect to pay and that's even for a well-specified decently powerful automatic version of a combustion model uh, and you'll realize that when we tell you that at the time of the launch of this updated design uh, Renault couldn't bring a variant of this latest ZE 50 powered Zoe with the full technical spec and that includes the latest R135 electric motor and 50 kilowatt DC rapid charging capability to market for less than around £30,000. No, not even after subtraction of the government's £3,000 plug-in car grant. With that in mind, uh, to try to reach a bit further down market, at the time of this test in mid-2020, the French brand was allowing purchasing folk to save £1,000 by doing without the 50 kilowatt onboard DC rapid charger, and on certain variants to save a further £500 by making do with the previous spec lower-powered 80 kilowatt R110 electric motor. At the time of this test, uh, the base play spec variant could only be had in R110 form and without the 50 kilowatt onboard charger and cost around £26,500. With the other two spec levels, the mid-range iconic option that most folk choose and the top GT line variant tested here, you can opt in or out with the 50 kilowatt DC rapid charger and with mid-range iconic trim, there's the option of downgrading to the 80 kilowatt R110 electric motor too. Our advice is not to concern yourself with penny pinching here. If, as is usually the case, you'll be leasing this car, uh, then having both features won't make a world of difference to your monthly rates. So we would really suggest that you tick those boxes as we have here. Uh, do that with GT line trim. So getting yourself a Zoe like this one in R135 50 rapid charge form. And the outright price would be around 31,000 pounds. For completion, as part of this pricing section, we'll also mention the Zoe van. Yes, this EV also comes as a little commercial vehicle. In LCV form, this model can only be had with the older R110 electric motor, but there is still the option of the 50 kilowatt onboard DC rapid charger if you want that. Uh, there are two trim levels, iBusiness and iBusiness Plus, and XVAT Zoe van pricing sits in the 19,500 to 21,000 pound bracket. That's after subtraction of the much larger government plug-in vehicle grant over 6,000 pounds that applies to vans. But let's get back to this car version and on to rival model comparisons, the pricing for which we'll quote, assuming that the £3,000 government plug-in car grant has already been deducted. 
Now, how you might perceive this Renault's value proposition depends, of course, on your point of comparison. Now, probably the most obvious compact EV hatch competitors are the three identically engineered PSA group contenders, uh, the Peugeot E208, the Vauxhall Corsa E, and the DS3 Crossback e tense Now, these three rivals sit in pretty much exactly the same pricing ballpark as a Zoe, but they give you less boot space and about 40 miles less operating range. Renault's experience uh, in EVs really tells here and it does when you start to look at other rivals too. Uh, take for example the three recently launched trendy lifestyle orientated models in the segment, the Honda e, the Mini Electric and the Mazda MX-30. They're also comparably priced against this Renault but they all use much smaller batteries so they will give you a lot less EV operating range. It's certainly possible, of course, to pay a lot less for a small EV than Renault's asking here. Around 19 to 21,000 will get you EV models from the smaller city car sector. Uh, cars like the Smart EQ44, uh, the Volkswagen E-Up and the Seat Mi Electric. But with those, you'd have to accept a lot less interior space and a much lower operating range. All the other compact EV options available to you will see you in a fractionally bigger car than this Zoe, uh, something family hatch shaped rather than, as here, super mini sized. Uh, so at the bottom end of the pricing spectrum is the MG ZS EV, which theoretically costs around £26,000, but at the time of this test was freely available for much less than that with various offers. But the MG can't approach this Zoe's interior quality and it'll only take you um, 163 miles between charges. You're more likely to be looking at this Renault's cousin, the Nissan Leaf. Uh, now that initially looks tempting. It's priced from around £27,000 until you realise that virtually all the Leaf variants come with a much smaller 40 kilowatt hour battery that can only take you 168 miles between charges. For a Leaf with a Zoe style range, well, you'll need the 62 kilowatt hour Leaf E Plus variant and that costs well over £33,000. That's uh, the kind of money that you could also easily find yourself paying for a comparable 58 kilowatt hour version of Volkswagen's ID3. And you'll need uh, more than that for a BMW i3, think 35 to 40,000 pounds, depending on the variant you want. But what about the Korean contingent? Well, at first glance, uh, cars like the Hyundai Kona Electric, the Kia e Nero, and the Kia Soul all seem worth considering thanks to their use of a 64 kilowatt hour battery that can deliver around 280 miles between charges. The caveat, though, is that prices sit in the 33 to 36,000 pound bracket, and that's well above Zoe levels. To get a Hyundai Kona Electric or a Kia e Nero priced comparably to this Renault, well, you'd have to settle for a variant of either the car uh, that's powered by a much smaller 39 kilowatt hour battery and that would only give you around 180 miles between charges. The same issue also applies to the Hyundai Ioniq electric which also uses a 39 kilowatt hour battery. Enough. We've done the model comparison so that you don't have to. Having considered all that, it's really easy to see why this Zoe remains a European bestseller, particularly as Renault has been pretty generous with the standard specification. And that's something that we're going to look at in rather more detail now. Now, all models get the brand's latest RE50 battery with 52 kilowatt hours, and all the key electric drive elements come fitted, of course, throughout the range, including the single speed auto transmission with its E shifter gear selector and its regenerative braking rich. B mode. Plus there's an eco meter which restricts throttle travel and climate output and that helps you to maximize range and a ZE voice pedestrian warning alarm which will warn unwary pavement folk of your approach at low speeds. Uh, Renault also supplies its patented chameleon charger for charging between 3 kilowatts and 20 kilowatts along with the usual type 2 charging cable plus the brand will also throw in a free 7 kilowatt home wall box. As with all EVs, you get an app to manage your charging regime. In this case, the services section of the My Renault app, which gives you battery charging status, charge scheduling and climate preconditioning features. It can also help you to find the car if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it. And it'll allow you to locate local charging stations nearby or at a set destination. 
Beyond that, the kit level is, of course, down to the trim level that you choose. Now, with base play spec, uh, which, as we mentioned earlier, only comes with the older, lower-powered 80-kilowatt R110 electric motor, you get full LED headlamps with a C-shaped daytime running light signature, plus front fog lights, auto headlamps and wipers, and 15-inch wheels in a flex design. Uh, inside the play version, there's a customizable 10-inch instrument binnacle display screen and a further 7-inch center dash infotainment touchscreen. Now that has Renault's Easy Link radio setup, plus Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Uh, at this level in the range too, uh, you also get a hands-free key card, cruise control with a speed limiter, uh, air conditioning and heated powered mirrors. Most Zoe customers want more though and they will push up the range at least as far as mid-level iconic trim if only to get the opportunity of paying extra for the higher powered 100 kilowatt R135 electric motor and the 50 kilowatt onboard DC rapid charger. An iconic spec model is recognizable by its 16 inch alloy wheels and body colored door mirrors. Uh, inside there's a slightly smarter feel and that's thanks to upgraded upholstery which is 100% recycled and a synthetic leather covering for the steering wheel. Uh, in any EV you ideally really need navigation and at iconic level you get it on the 7 inch center dash touchscreen and that's together with a Google search setup, uh, live traffic info and weather report too. Uh, this system also includes an upgraded six speaker DAB stereo and a couple of extra USB sockets for rear seat folk and they can position themselves on a split folding rear bench. Um, Iconic Trim also gives you climate control, uh, a wireless smartphone charger, also rear electric windows, rear parking sensors, uh, overspeed protection, an automatic high and low beam system for the headlights and a suite of camera driven safety features that we'll cover off in just a moment. Ideally though, you'd want to stretch to the top GT line vent we're trying here, recognizable by its chrome stamped grille, 16 inch diamond cut alloy wheels and tinting for the rear windows and the rear screen. Uh, other GT line features include a larger 9.3 inch portrait style center dash touchscreen, uh, part synthetic leather upholstery, a rear view reversing camera, power folding mirrors, front parking sensors and an auto dimming rear view mirror. On to options uh, which you shouldn't consider until on an Iconic or GT line model you've budgeted the extra thousand pounds for the 50 kilowatt DC onboard charger we keep mentioning. Now it's true that uh, such rapid public chargers are still relatively rare to find but in the future they won't be and they'll enable you to attempt much longer journeys in your Zoe. Uh, you'll need to progress at least as far as iconic trim to get the chance to specify most other options. Uh, here we have the extra cost winter pack which gives you heated seats and a heated steering wheel too. On an iconic model uh, you could also consider the technology pack. Now that would give you the larger 9.3 inch EasyLink center dash display, uh, front parking sensors and the rear view camera. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the GT line model that we have here already gets those last three features, but you can further embellish a GT line Zoe like this one with a Bose premium 3D sound system, uh, larger 17 inch alloy wheels and a hands-free parking setup that'll steer you into spaces. Whatever Zoe model you choose, you'll almost certainly be paying your Renault dealer more for your choice of paint colour because solid glacier white is the only shade that comes free of charge. Uh, there is a selection between a palette of metallic colours or various pricier Renault ID shades uh, like the Celadon blue finish that we have here. Uh, that's one of three freshly added paint finishes. Uh, the other two are flame red and quartz white. You can also add a shark fin antenna for the roof, uh, illuminated door sills, premium floor mats and an armrest too. As for practical extras, well, there's a boot sill protector, a boot liner, a false floor cable storage compartment, uh, also for the boot. Uh, there are bodywork protection films and there's a Kenwood dash cam. 
On to safety stuff. Uh, Euro NCAP originally awarded the Zoe a full five stars for safety, with an 89% showing in adult occupant protection and an 80% rating for child safety. But that was before Euro NCAP started fully taking into account the inclusion of camera safety kit. If it was tested today, the Zoe wouldn't do that well because with base play spec, you only get the basics, and that means twin front, side, and curtain airbags, uh, a pedestrian friendly bonnet, Isofix child seat fastenings and all of the usual electronic aids for braking, traction and stability control. Uh, stretch up to mid-range iconic trim, there's a lot more including lane departure warning which alerts you if you drift out of your lane and lane keep assist which subtly steers you back to where you ought to be should that happen. Uh, there's also traffic sign recognition, blind spot monitoring and as I mentioned earlier uh, there's an automatic high-low beam for the headlights. Disappointingly though uh, Renault isn't offering any kind of autonomous uh, emergency braking system or indeed features like rear cross traffic alert uh, and there's certainly no kind of semi-autonomous drive tech of the sort that you can have on a Clio. Now that's presumably because of the extended age of this Zoe's basic design uh, which had to tell some somewhere. We've long said in these films that EV sales would only start to really get going once the driving range of affordable contenders had become long enough for a full battery powered model to make sense as an only car. Whether that's happened here will be a matter of some debate amongst potential customers. Uh, some will certainly think so. Uh, as we mentioned elsewhere in this film, uh, Zoe in this ZE50 battery form is WLTP rated at 245 miles between charges, which is a 30% improvement over the previous 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. To give you some perspective on that, when we first tested the original 22 kilowatt hour version of this car back in 2013, Renault gave us a so-called real world range figure of anywhere between 62 and 93 miles. The modern range claim, I like that previous one, will inevitably be subject to a bit of variance depending on the time of year and on the type of roads that you'll be using and of course, most of all, on the way that you drive. Potentially, uh, quite a lot of variance actually. That range figure would fall to just 149 miles if you had motorway mileage to do and you drove at a steady 70 miles an hour. Whatever kinds of roads you're using, achieving maximum range will certainly require you to have engaged the provided eco-meter, which restricts throttle travel and the climate system output. In our market and model range section, we attempted to give you some range perspective here amongst comparably priced compact EV hatches, all of which, it turns out, struggle to match this runner in that regard. Uh, the Peugeot E208, the Vauxhall Corsa E and the DS3 Crossback E10s all manage 206 miles. A base 45 kilowatt hour Volkswagen ID3 is rated at 205 miles and the BMW i3 is rated at up to 188 miles, which is about the same figure as you get from 39 kilowatt hour versions of the Kia e Nero, the Hyundai Kona Electric and the Hyundai Ioniq Electric 2. Uh, the Mini Electric, the Honda e and the Mazda MX-30 all have much smaller batteries, so they'll be closer to the 150 mile mark. To do better than Renault is offering here, you'd need to pay quite a lot more for pricier, bigger battery versions of the Nissan Leaf, the Volkswagen ID3, the Hyundai Kona Electric, or the Kia e Nero. And even then, you won't go that much further than a Zoe can manage. As with any EV, a key to improving range efficiency will lie with the effectiveness of brake energy regeneration harvesting, uh, which you can maximize by selecting this B drive setting, which slows the car more noticeably when you come off the throttle. You'll also want to keep a close eye on the central circular instrument binnacle display, uh, staying in the green eco driving or the blue uh, brake regeneration sections of the middle dial. To the left of this gauge, you can select various consumption readouts, while to the right of it, you can select either an energy monitor or a leaf graphic that uh, grades you on the frugality of your driving. 
We should uh, get on to charging issues. There's an EV programming section of the centre dash screen with immediate postponed and programmed charge options. Plus, you can set times for climate preconditioning uh, so that this cabin will be perfectly warmed or cooled for when you enter the car and it won't be necessary to use precious battery energy uh, with the fan full on uh, warming the cabin up or cooling it down. The charging port is behind the Renault Diamond logo and the front of the car and it incorporates both a European standard socket and a two pin connector for DC charging. Uh, you'll use the included Type 2 cable for everyday charging and as you do so, Renault's patented onboard chameleon charger adapts to the source used, ensuring that the car is drawing the maximum amount of power as safely and as quickly as possible. Thanks to this, the Zoe can use a charging point with up to a 22 kilowatt supply and accept the unit's maximum power rate. And that isn't a given with small EVs. Some of them are still limited to an 11 kilowatt charge point, even if the charger in question has a higher rated output. So do check the small print. You might think that adding in a larger battery could mean that the car will now take ages to charge. And it is certainly true that replenishing a battery this big uh, isn't for the faint hearted, but it can still be done overnight via a garage wall box, uh, so most owners will be satisfied. Runner offers Zoe uh, users free access to a dedicated web portal called Charge Vision, which allows EV folk to easily monitor exactly how much electricity has been used. If you haven't got a charging wall box in your garage, then obviously you're going to need one. A seven kilowatt unit that uh, Renault includes with the cost of the car, and that'll be installed for you by BP Charge Master, and it can be mounted inside or outside of your property. Uh, with the wall box in place, uh, you'll be able able to revive the 192 lithium-ion cells of the car's 400 volt, 326 kilo RE50 battery from empty in 9 hours and 25 minutes, which is about half the course in this segment. Uh, that's more than three times quicker than it would take you if you merely plug this car into a domestic three-pin supply, which would take a yawning 34 hours and 30 minutes. Uh, the 9.25 hour charge will set you back in the region of around seven pounds on most household tariffs or around five pounds if more sensibly you restricted your charging to the six hours in a day in which it could be completed on an economy seven tariff. Uh, to give you some perspective on that, a typical petrol powered super mini of the same size would use 27 pounds worth of fuel to cover this Zoe's 245 mile operating distance. Finding charging stations when you're out and about is something you can do via the MyRunO app, although since it doesn't know which accounts you'll hold with which providers, it might be better to use a ZapMap app on your phone. If you can find an 11 kilowatt three-phase charger, then the replenishment time would be six hours. From a 22 or 33 kilowatt three-phase charger, it would be three hours. Or if you didn't have that long to hang about, you could get 75 miles of extra range in an hour. If you specify your car with the 50 kilowatt uh, onboard DC charger, you'll be able to use one of the DC 50 kilowatt uh, quick charge points, which are now springing up on major routes, in which case an 80% charge from empty would take just an hour and 10 minutes. With such a DC 50 kilowatt quick charge public point, a 30 minute charge is all that would be necessary to provide a 90 mile boost in range, allowing drivers on longer journeys to significantly extend their range while they take a short break. It's a pity that 50 kilowatt onboard DC charger costs extra. Renault says it wants to give owners a choice and points to the fact that the previous model's 43 kilowatt onboard charger option was taken up by only 10% of buyers. Anyway, whatever charging spec your Zoe comes with, a journey planner that's part of the My Renault app will allow you to plan your trip ahead, automatically accounting for stops at charging stations. Plus, it also takes into account charging times when calculating uh, an arrival time. What else might you need to know? Uh, well, as a Zoe owner, you'll be exempt from the London congestion charge, that's usually £11.50 a day, and the ultra low emission zone charge, an additional £12.50 a day. And new Zoe owners don't pay any VD road tax either. 
For company car users, electric vehicles offer potentially huge tax savings as they incur zero benefit in kind taxation in year one of ownership, then just 1% and 2% of the car's P11D value, respectively, in the following two years after. And compare that to a 22% BIK exposure for a diesel car emitting 100 grams per kilometer of CO2 or just over. As for your warranty, well, it's a five-year, 100,000-mile deal, and it offers unlimited mileage in the first two years. The battery gets its own eight-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Maintenance will obviously be cheaper than it would be for a combustion engine model. An electric vehicle does, after all, have 20% fewer moving parts. And service inspections, as with a Nissan Leaf, are required annually or every 18,000 miles, whichever comes around first. The brand offers two prepaid Easy Life optional service plans, one covering you for three years and 30,000, and the other covering you for four years and 40,000 miles. If you're wondering about residual values, well, these vary depending on future market take-up of EVs, as at the moment, uh, many electric vehicles tend to shed value faster than conventional petrol or diesel models, but that state of affairs could change very quickly as prevailing public opinion is shaped by the media. Renault believes that this RE50 Zoe model will be worth £3,000 more after three years of ownership than the previous RE40 battery version, thanks to its extra equipment and technology. Independent experts reckon that after three years and 60,000 miles, a Zoe will still be worth 44.6% of its original value. To give you some market perspective, uh, the equivalent figure for a Kia e-Niro, for example, would be 43%. Insurance is a bit higher than it would be for a conventional combustion engine super mini. It starts at Group 18 for the base play spec variant. For an R110 iconic model, it'll be Group 19, while all the R135 variants, including including all GT line derivatives, are all rated at Group 22. And what about the green issues? Well, some in the green lobby get very angry about the whole pure electric car, zero emissions ethos. They reckon that that ignores the well-to-wheel demands of supplying the electricity that powers cars of this kind. Well, we'd respond by pointing out that these people usually completely overlook the fact that CO2 figures for conventional cars fail to take into account the logistical cost of getting the fuel to the pump. Still, if you are one of those enviro-conscious folk, uh, will tell you that using a well-to-wheels calculation based on typical use of the UK energy grid, the burden of filling your batteries in this car will result in a theoretical 60 grams per kilometre of CO2 being released into the atmosphere. That's certainly good, but it's some way from being completely green. Which is also a comment that you could apply to electric vehicle engineering as a whole. Uh, lithium ion batteries aren't currently recyclable in the way that the fuel cells used in hydrogen powered vehicles are. Currently, when EV vehicles are reaching the ends of their lives, uh, the batteries are being reused as electricity storage buffers. After that, though, uh, they can't simply be scrapped because lithium iron has explosive elements. So until technology comes up with a proper eco-friendly recycling solution, which is either imminent or a long way off, depending on who you listen to, uh, these batteries are simply being buried in landfills, uh, which is hardly sustainable in the long term for humankind, but then nor is the pollution caused by combustion power. If you see the EV solution as the lesser of the two evils and your purchase of a battery power model has to be contained within a reasonable budget, we think that this one has quite a call on your attention. This ZE50 model Renault Zoe represents yet another step towards the electric vehicle becoming a genuinely practical mode of transport for the average motorist. There are still a number of caveats that will inhibit mass take-up, but most of those are due to the inherent nature of electric vehicles themselves rather than to any particular flaw in the Zoe here. There's a high initial upfront price, but then that's the case with obvious rivals too. And once you've stomached that, uh, assuming you have off-street parking and assuming you have a shortish urban commute too, the overall numbers don't work out at all badly. There certainly aren't many small cars that are much more relaxing to pilot through the city streets. 
We think the larger batteries WLTP range increased to as much as 245 miles will make all the difference for potential customers. But the arithmetic still works out in favour of a small petrol super mini on a pure costs basis. Until taxation legislation more completely favours EVs, that's going to be very hard to change. The gap is narrowing though, and many drivers will be willing to pay a small premium for this Zoe's smooth ride, silent acceleration and feel-good vibe. This revised model's redesigned cabin is a big step forward, even if it can't quite match the quality of German rivals. And this Renault is very class competitive in terms of rear seat room and luggage space. Plus, the looks have dated amazingly well for a design of this age. This is still one of the most attractive small EVs currently on sale. In summary, the Zoe pushes the EV revolution on a further stage, but we're still not quite at the point of mass acceptance here. That won't happen until prices fall, the public charging network improves and driving range figures further increase. When all that takes place, as it eventually must, Renault's EV investment gamble may yet handsomely pay off. And when that happens, the Zoe will have more than played its part.